Hi guys, so this is a very quick video showing how you can fix a corrupted Plex database. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. Hi guys, so right, fixing a Plex database. Well, to be 100% honest, I don't actually use Plex myself. I used to use MB and now I'm using Jellyfin, but I do know a whole bunch of people who do use Plex. And in fact, one of my Patreons and good friend contacted me a few weeks ago and asked if I could help him fix the database corruption on his Plex. And he kindly let me record what happened when I was doing it. So here we are now on his server and here's his Plex with the corrupted database. Now before fixing a database on Plex, we need to make sure that Plex isn't running. So that's good, Plex has stopped here, so we can continue. And we need to know the location of where the Plex app data is. So I'm going to have a look in the template here and scroll down to the bottom and see where that is. Now on this server, the app data actually isn't in the app data folder. All of the Plex app data is on a separate SSD pool called Plex in the folder called Media Server. So let's take a note of where that is and pop that into a text editor. So really I'm just putting things in this text editor just as notes because I'm going to need various locations later on. Okay, so we know the app data location. So now we need to find the location of the Plex database in that app data location. So I'm going to browse to there on Unraid in the web browser. So into the Plex SSD in the pool devices, into Plex Media Server, Library, Application Support, Plex Media Server, Plugin Support, and then here databases and we can see here the main Plex databases here it's about one and a half gigs and it was last modified on September the 16th at 1018. Now we have got some other Plex backup databases here but nothing really that's very recent these look like they're back in February with February the 17th seeing the newest so if I can't repair this database I'm gonna to have to go back to one of these earlier backups and then rescan the Plex library afterwards. Obviously that's the last resort and I really don't want to have to do that, but it is an option if all else fails, I could just delete the original Plex database and then rename the most recent one to what the Plex database is here. Anyway, we're not going to do that, we're going to fix this database. Okay, so let's copy the location of the database and paste that in the text editor. And also let's put the name of the database in the text editor as well. OK, so now let's open up a terminal window. And I'm going to go to the directory where Plex is. And I'm going to make another folder here just called Database Tools. OK, so that's created. Now what I want to do is copy the Database Tools from inside the Plex container into the location on my app data. Now there's a special database tool built into Plex which is written just specially for Plex, a special SQL tool. Now this tool isn't actually in the Plex app data but rather it's actually in the Docker image of Plex. But we can copy it from the image without actually having to start Plex using this command. Docker space CP space and then the name of the Plex container. For me it's Plex Media Server. And obviously if you want to check what the name is then if we just go to the Docker page we can see the name of the container here. So obviously if you're using a different Plex container, you'd need to put its name there and not the one I have. Okay, so after putting the name of the container, we put a colon and then the location we want to copy from, which is forward slash USR forward slash lib forward slash Plex media server forward slash. So we're gonna copy everything from here into this directory we just created. So for me, that's forward slash MNT Plex Plex Media Server Database Tool. So with that done, just hit enter. So now if we go into that directory and list out the files, this is the file we're looking for here, which is the Plex SQL file. And we're going to use this to repair the database. OK, so let's clear the screen. But before we do any repairs, let's just check the integrity of the database. So to do that, in speech marks, we need to type Plex space SQLite, close quotations, and then the location here of the database. Again, we need that in quotations. 
And the reason we need these in quotations is anything that has a space in it, it needs to be put in quotes, otherwise it's not going to work. So after that we need to put a space and in quotations again type pragma space integrity underscore check and then close quotes. Okay this might take a little while and it will find any errors and report back to us. Now before I do anything I'm going to back up this database just so I've got a copy of it. So I'm going to type CP and then in quotations the location of the database. Close the quotes and then a space and then again in quotations the location but I'm going to append it underscore old. Okay so let's quickly copy that. Right so that's done. Now there's a backup copy of the Plex database should anything go wrong. So now I'm going to try and automatically repair the Plex database. So again in quotations I'm going to type Plex space SQLite and then a space and then in quotations the location of the database we want this to work on. So I'm going to paste that in here. Then don't forget to close the quotations. So next we need to put again in quotations dot output space recover dot out close quotations then a space again in quotations dot recover close quotations. Now remember all of these commands are in the description if you want to just copy and paste them all. So once you put that in just hit enter and then the Plex SQLite program will go through the database and try and make repairs. Now this might take a little bit of time and it may not actually work for everyone. So once the process is finished we want to check the integrity of the database again so we we'll use the same command as we did a moment ago to check that. Now for those of you who don't know if you want to get to old commands you've done before just hit the up arrow on your keyboard and it will scroll through the commands you've just put in. So here I've got the command ending in pragma integrity check. I'm going to hit enter. Hmm, now unfortunately it didn't work for me, still got the same errors. So now I'm going to try and manually fix the database by dumping the database and then re-importing it in. To make it easier to see what's going on I'm going to clear the screen and now run the command to dump the database. Again to dump it we're going to use Plex SQLite. So again I'm just arrowing up to go through the old commands and I'm going to change the end here with the output recovery part. I'm going to delete that off. I'm going to put in quotations dot output space dump SQL and then a space and then in quotations dot dump. So this will dump the information out the database. Again this will take a few minutes. Okay so that's done. So next I need to delete the database from where this information just got dumped. So again I'll copy the location of the database from my text file and then to delete that database in the command line I'm going to type rm space then in quotations the location of that database. Okay so the Plex database is now deleted but if for any reason this doesn't work I can always go back to the backup and that's why I copied that before starting this process. Okay so now that database is deleted I'm going to import what we just dumped into a fresh database but with the same name as it had before. So again I just arrowed up to get to the last command and then just delete the output dump SQL part. And so now to import that dump data into the new database I'm going to put the command here in quotations dot read space dump dot SQL. Okay so there was one error whilst importing it. I don't think that's going to make any difference. It should be okay. So just to check again I'm going to check the integrity of the database now. Okay so it says the database is okay so I'll take that as a bit of a win. Now because I've made a new database there's a couple of things I'm going to have to do to just make sure everything's fine. So looking in the Plex database folder which I still got up from before on the Unraid server. Now I'm looking for two files here. The com.plexapp.library.db-shm and the db-wal. Although these files here look very similar these are not the files we shouldn't delete these. And also we shouldn't delete these either. So if you can't find those two files don't worry there's nothing for you to delete. Now if you can't be bothered to actually look for those files and see if they're there or you think they might be and you just haven't seen them you can just try and delete them anyway and it will just tell you it can't find the file and there's nothing there. So as expected for the first one that's the error I've got now. And again I'll get the same error if I try and delete the second file because for me it's not there. Okay so the final thing that I'm going to do I'm just going to be 100% sure that that database can be written to. So I'm going to change its permissions to 777 read write and execute. So to do that I'm using the command chmod space 777 
then a space, and then in quotations, the location of the database. Okay, so that's everything done. So I'm going to close all of these windows now. I'm going to go back to the Docker tab here. And now I'm going to restart up Plex. And hopefully the database problems will be a thing of the past. So let's just check if Plex is loaded. Okay, so it's looking good so far. Everything's correct. Everything's loaded. And actually I fixed this database over a month ago now. And my friend Dan's told me everything's been fine. Plex has been running perfectly. So the repair was good. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful for you Plex guys who have had database problems. If you did or you just like watching the video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, go on, hit that subscribe button. You may as well join and share the video with anyone else who you might think will find the video useful. Now, I just want to say a really big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your support and making it possible for me to make these videos. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.